Hi, and welcome to this episode of Brainy Moms. I'm Dr. Amy Moore here with my co-host, Terry Miller, and we are coming to you today from a sunny and scorching hot Colorado. (laughs) We're really excited to introduce our guest today, Kim Hansen. Kim is the CEO of Learning RX, the largest one-on-one brain training company in the world. She's a former teacher and co-author of the book, Unlock the Einstein Inside, Applying New Brain Science to Wake Up the Smart in Your Child. Kim's career passion is to help professionals, educators, and parents learn more about cognitive skills training and the dramatic results it can have on real life performance. Kim is here to share some powerful life lessons for both parents and kids. Yay. So glad you're with us. Yes, glad you're here, Kim. Yeah, so I'm excited I, to be here. Good. Yeah, I love I love your podcast. I listen to it every week. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for sponsoring our podcast. Yeah. Yes. Um. So I want to jump right in and and ask a question. Our listeners will be curious about how did you go from being a teacher in an inner city school to running a global cognitive training corporation? Yeah, it's kind of a, you know what, in some ways, it's not that big of a jump. (laughs) Because I think when you are uh, teaching in the inner city, you, uh, you kind of have to know how to run a classroom, you have to know how to manage your time. Uh, You know, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of decisions that you make. And so I think that it was actually great practice for running a company. Um, just eased right into it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think also because, uh, I had been in business or learned about business most of my life Mm -hmm. that, uh, I don't know, it's definitely a challenge. I'm not going to say that, but, uh, I like to step up to challenges. And so when there's a new challenge for me to step up to, um, Mm -hmm. it excites me and I see it as, uh, I don't know, invigorating. And I love to, uh, solve problems. And so when I was in the inner city teaching, I was always solving problems. And that's the same thing I do at Learning RX every day is, you know, we, we solve problems and, uh, and figure out how to reach more people with what we do. Yep. So Learning RX actually started as your dad's company, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you kind of grew up in his work. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, my dad is the founder of Learning RX. And uh, when I was even just a, like a baby, <laughs> my dad was so interested in how people learn. And so he was all, he just had this curiosity for what it takes to learn. And he had one question that he really wanted to answer. And that was um, how could you have a person? that is smart, but had trouble learning to read. He was just very puzzled by that. And so back in the, in the seventies, he sought out to try to figure out what it took. And that's how he found like cognitive skills and everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So, and I was kind of, uh, I hate to say I'm a Guinea pig, but I was kind of his Guinea pig (laughs) as a kid. Uh, you know, he tried to teach me how to, uh, crawl faster by putting me on an inclined board. (laughs) He he carpeted it. So that was nice. But my mom (laughs) came and saved me. Um, He taught me how to read when I was two, I would sit in my high chair and I knew 800 flashcards of words. Um, Amazing. (laughs) Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah. So, and I've been taking IQ tests since I was four, like many of them every every year. (laughs) So you really were a guinea pig. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I do really good on them, but I don't know that it's really fair because I've been, it's something I've practiced all my life. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So speaking of your dad, um, we're really excited to hear some of the life lessons that he and your mom taught you. And so you told us uh, one lesson that has stuck with you is to do things smart. Talk about that. Yeah. So my dad, Uh, was a great model to always be learning. Um, I think because he was always studying how we learn, uh, he knew that learning was important. And so uh, 
he always, no matter what he was doing. So like at one time he decided to do real estate and he bought like, I don't know, I think like a hundred house, houses or like apartment units um, uh, back in my hometown. And so I would go to seminars with him. So he was always reading books, listening to books on tape, going to seminars. And um, that's just kind of what I always did right along with him because I was, you know, like his partner. Um, but then also just to think about how to do things smart. So for example, when I was doing my chores, I still to this day, if I vacuum my house, I can hear my dad in the back of my head saying, did you sweep like the, the corners first? <laughs> and so my dad, <laughs> like, if I don't do it, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go get the broom and, you know, do it smart. Like my dad taught me. Um, but I'm always, uh, you know, kind of like reflecting back on what I've done or how could I do it better? How could I do it faster? How could I do it easier? Um, I know when I was a kid, I used to help my dad with like his mailing um, like he would do direct mail mm -hmm. and, um, I would set up my sisters and the dining room table and we would kind of set up like a little conveyor belt and I would make sure like everything was in the right order. And then we would try to figure out like how to do it better and faster each time. So like, oh, if we had a sponge, then we could just, you know, put it across the envelope really quick and then pass it on. And then, you know, if we did it this way, then the zip codes would be faster. And nice. so I think that that's just always something that my dad just kind of instilled in mm -hmm. me. And so after I do something, I just, I'm very reflective and I just think even a conversation, you know what I mean? Like, what should I have left out and what could I have said better or how could I, you know, have communicated it better or been more tactful or, you know, things like that. And so, um, I don't know. One of the things he taught me too is to pretend that you are the expert on it. So if you're even doing something kind of like mundane, like doing the dishes, it's like, okay, if I was going to teach a seminar on how to do the dishes or how to load the dishwasher, what is the best way? And so, for example, I always start from the back and then move to the front. I, you know what I mean? Try to play Tetris as I'm doing it. I kind of have different sections that different things go in. Um, I put all of, like when you uh, take your silverware, you kind of sort them anyway. So why not put all of the forks in one, all of the spoons in one, all of the knives in one. And then when you go to empty it, it's just like one drop instead of having to sort everything. So just things like that. So, so you, it actually forces you almost to have a mindset of excellence. Like I'm going to do everything with excellence. Um, even the little things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then also just to also ask for feedback, you know, a lot of people, uh, we know that we should listen to feedback, but a lot of us don't even think to ask for feedback. So yeah. like, what could I have done better? What could, you know, how could I have done this faster? That's good. Yeah. I want to, I want to just ask real quick for the listeners to hear. So the way you're describing it, I'm thinking that sounds very oldest child. Okay. So describe the family you grew up in. <laughs> like, where are you in the mix? Yeah. So I am an oldest child. <laughs> you're <not> correct. <laughs> I'm the oldest of five okay. and um, yeah. So I had to babysit when I was really young and you know what I mean? I was, my dad would always give me something to figure out and say, you're smart, figure it out. So and great. Okay. So like, just describe. So when you were 18, what were the ages and, and genders of your siblings? Okay. So when I was 18, <laughs> I had two sisters under me. So uh, we're all two years apart, my oh, sisters okay. and I. So if I was 18, uh, my sister Candy would have been 16 and then my sister Tanya 14. And then I have two brothers at the end. And so I'm 10 years older than my brother, Sean, and 13 years older than my brother, Brett. Okay. So, so definitely that successful go-getter oldest kid mentality. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, so another lesson that you talked about is even when you're not ready, be willing and brave. Tell us about that one. Yeah. So my dad would uh, give me, I should say, opportunities all the time. 
<laughs> that uh, that most kids would be like, what? I'm just a kid. Like, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, at one point he was selling like books for successful living and he would set out, set up like, like a booth and he would sell the books. Well, my dad would go off, uh, you know, and listen to speakers and that kind of thing. And I ran the whole booth, but I was probably only like nine. Dang, that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, so I was, you know, taking people's checks and their money and, you know, um, so, you know, things like that. Um, My dad also would make me negotiate when I was little. And so he might, this is kind of an example. Maybe we would go to like the, the movies and at the mall, you know, like Sabaro's was just about to close and my dad would give me $5 and he'd say, go see how much pizza you can get for $5. So I'd have to, I'm like, Oh dad, <laughs> but it really, <laughs> so I had to negotiate all the time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So go up, kind of introduce myself, you know, be friendly. And then, you know, Hey, I bet you're going to throw away a lot of this pizza. How about I take some of it off your hands for $5? (laughs) Did it work? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, every time it was successful, um, I would have to do more of it. So, (laughs) but that helps me today. You know, when I'm working with a vendor or that type of thing, Mm -hmm. I try to negotiate the best deal for our company and for our franchisees. Um, And so it comes in handy. Yeah. Well, and that can be scary, right? So that's what you're saying. I mean, you learned bravery Mm -hmm. from the beginning. So that was a natural trait, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's another example. Um, You guys probably know I like to doodle. Mm -hmm. And when I was nine, I made my own card series. So I drew, uh, I had like three greeting cards and a postcard. And um, we went and we picked out like the ink and the paper. And then when we got home, my dad was like, okay, well, now you need to like sell sell 10 packs before you can have dinner. And I was like, (laughs) wait, what? Like, I'm only nine. (laughs) Oh my and oh, so I put them together in like little sandwich baggies and I had to go and knock on the doors and try to like sell my greeting cards. And I learned that old ladies <laughs> really like stationery. And so, and I would make them a deal because I needed to sell 10 so I could eat dinner. And so I'd be <laughs> like, you know, and then there's a deal. If you buy three, you know, you get the same for two or whatever it was. Right, but. right. So just things like that. My dad just always kind of put me on the spot. Um, And, you know, even when I stepped in to be the CEO, I wasn't sure if I was really ready, but I was willing. And if you're willing and you're brave and, you know, you're not afraid of risk and you'll try, um, you might find out that you're capable, you're uh, more capable of things than you knew. Right. I love that. Yeah, it's so good. Because yeah, I mean, kids never know. We never know as humans. We never know what we're capable of until we push to failure, Mm -hmm. until we push ourselves to try the uncomfortable. Otherwise, we just sit here peaceful and quiet and comfortable and we never do anything. So that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So this next one really speaks to me. Um, So your parents taught you to forgive easily. Walk us through that one. Yeah. Um, My parents and I think one thing is my dad is really good at forgiving and forgetting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so not only, you know, these things are things that he also modeled. It's not just things that he said to me. (laughs) And I think that that's an important point too, that, you know, if you, if people demonstrate for you forgiveness, then it's a lot easier for you to forgive. But we used to always have to say that we were sorry. And then we'd have to like hug each other (laughs) and, you know, when you're a sibling and you're just in a fight and, you know, now you have to hug each other. It's like, ah, but, um, you know, I've also just learned that, uh, you know, when you don't forgive, you can get, you can become bitter and bitterness only hurts you. Yeah. And so, uh, sometimes the other person doesn't even know (laughs) maybe that you haven't forgiven them. And so I've just learned to just always forgive easily. Um, in fact, 
back when I was like a youth pastor's wife, when my husband was a youth pastor, we went to a conference and there was a pastor's wife there who talked about, because when you're, when you're a pastor's wife, people will come up to you and they'll just say anything. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, uh, you know, they think that they're safe, even talking about your family or your husband. And so she had this great lesson that when someone comes up to her and talk, says something mean about her husband or that, or his sermon or whatever it is that Mm -hmm. she would say in her head, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Like as they're talking and saying their stuff. And, um, that just really stood out to me. And I've just always done that. So if someone comes up and I start to feel a little offended, I just start forgiving them instantly. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that inner talk. Just yeah. so just say it to yourself. So powerful. That is so yeah. good because I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about, you know, like when one of my kids or my husband or whatever's annoying me <laughs> that I can just start going and inside I'm going, I forgive you. I forgive you. Yeah. I forgive you. I forgive you. And nod and okay. Right? Yeah, I want to punch him in the face, but no, if I start doing that, I'll be a nicer person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I do want to punch them in the face, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I've just, you know, learned to forgive. It's so um, good. Yeah. And okay, honestly, I'm, I'm it's, it's, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I said, I'm going to tattoo that on my arm. Say it to yourself. Forgive. I forgive you. I forgive you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say that it's harder. It's the hardest to forgive people that we love and are close to because they hurt us the most. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's a lot easier just to forgive someone you don't know or a stranger or you don't know very well. But uh, man, if you can practice it and then forgive those that are really important to you, you know what I mean? Like that is important. Um, And they say, I learned uh, a few years ago, you know how I always used to think that like love and hate were opposites. Do you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. love and hate, Uh but someone showed me a diagram that hate is like actually like on a circle really close to love. Right. And that's why hate can so easily come into a relationship where there has been love. Mm. And so, you know what I mean? If you learn how to forgive, then you never have to worry about getting bitter, which leads to hate. So, right. Because you have to have a powerful emotion um, to feel that way. Right. right? And so you rarely have a powerful emotion about a stranger. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, I want to hear about this next one. You said uh, you said that your mom taught you be interesting, not perfect. Yeah, I I love this lesson, and um, I don't know that I always understood it as a kid. Um, you know, sometimes I'd be working on a project or something, and I'd make a mistake, and I'd want to start over. And my mom would just be like, "Oh, no, you could just like just take that and turn that into a leaf," or do you know what I mean? Like. She was always good at, you know what I mean? Like turning stuff into something different. Um, And uh, I really realized this a few, I don't know, maybe seven-ish years ago, I started uh, uh, making pottery and throwing pots. And uh, I wasn't very good at it at first at all. And sometimes it would just like fly off the wheel and like hit the wall or whatever. And (laughs) I learned that I would take whatever, you know, like, so now it's flat on one side. So what I would do is I would just maybe like cut that piece out and then add something to it and, you know, still make it into something. And it's interesting because people do find my pottery very interesting. It's not perfect. Like a lot of the ladies are trying to make everything perfect. Mm -hmm. I actually now will just go in and rough it up a little bit, make it look like it's from the Italian countryside. And people will be like, wow, I love how you came up with that handle idea. But what they don't know is I dropped it. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, and I think also, I think as women, I think one of the things we have to be careful uh, that we don't teach our daughters how to be perfect Mm. and don't expect them to be perfect because that's a lot of pressure. And really, when you think about it, um, we don't really like perfect people they're, they're too much to live up to. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And um, if you're interesting, then you're fun to hang out with and you make a great friend. So um, I've just learned that being interesting is a lot better than always trying to be perfect. And it just, it's the pressure then goes away. And, you know, if you can just be fun and interesting, people will like you better than if you're perfect. Yeah. I love that. That's so important for daughters. You're right. Yeah. Well, sons too. You're right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, of, course, for, of course. For all our kids. Yeah. Right. For all our kids. Right? Absolutely. I see it. But like Kim, what you're talking about that, I see that more in my daughters, probably because as a woman, it's something I struggle with, you know, that idea that I have to have it all together and do everything and please everybody and be perfect. And, and I guess my daughters, I see emulate that more than my sons. So sure. yeah. Ouch. yeah. Yes. If you so, think of it, Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You can go on to the next one. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, in addition to lessons that you learned from your parents, you shared with us some lessons that you've learned um, from brain training, which is what you do, right? And you've done your whole life, but you know, your professional job now. Um, and the first one was um, get rid of negative talk. Talk yeah. to us about that. Yeah, so at Learning RX, uh, while someone's in brain training, we teach them three life lessons. And these are really the three things that stood out to me when I was a kid and I did brain training. And the first thing is to get rid of negative talk. Um, you know, when things are hard, it's real easy to get down on yourself and to have negative speak in your head. And um, back, way back in the, I don't know, like 80s, <laughs> my dad, when I was in brain training, my dad had this uh, Pringles can and on the Pringles can, he had like cut out like a bunch of magazine eyes and like pasted them on it. And, uh, you know, when you're doing brain training, you're only working on what you can't do. And so it can, it's hard, um, but it's so good for you. And uh, I remember when I would say, oh, I can't, my dad would make me go and spit it out and like drop it into the I can because the, the can you know was eyes ah, I can yes. and then I would have to like shake it and go I can I can I can I can and so all of a sudden you start to really curb your your talking because I would hate to have to go over and put my I can't in that I can um, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's funny I did the same thing uh, when my daughter Lily was uh doing brain training with me she'd be like oh I can't and I would be like eh. I'd like buzzer and then she would have to say I can I can I can I can I can five times and so that's just kind of part of our process um, as a brain trainer we try to like weed out any negative talk yeah I like that and that's an important life lesson for anything that you're trying to accomplish right, right? like if you could just change that I mean what have what a, uh, um, what a great thing to, to mm -hmm. gift to give to someone. Absolutely. And that I can, I love that idea. Yeah, I do too. It's so great, especially <laughs> for little kids. I'm just, I just get the best ideas. I'm just taking notes like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> talking. Like, Jerry's oh. going to go home and make an I can can. I do. But every Thursday evening I go home and I have these great ideas. And Friday, my kids are like, what? <laughs> Friday, I'm going to be like, all right, we're making an I can. I love yeah. it. So the next lesson that we have in uh, brain training is that uh, it's okay to fail, but it's not okay to quit. And this is, this is kind of the big idea that I think builds resilience and grit in the students that uh, go through our program, because uh, we're only working on what you can't do. If you right. can do it, then there's no reason to work on it because we're building skill. And so uh, you have to do, you have to practice and drill and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, but it's such a good thing to learn. Um, you know, Albert, uh, or not Albert Einstein, but uh, Thomas Edison, I grew up at, uh, and went to an elementary school that was named after Thomas Edison. And I can remember like on the wall, they had, uh, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Nice. 
Love it. Yeah. So, yeah. I just think and that that's a great lesson. Yeah. And we've been talking, we've had several guests um, on our podcast in the last couple of episodes that have talked about perseverance and self-efficacy and, you know, just learning through your mistakes and learning through your failures and using those as opportunities to grow. And so I love that you're one of those lessons just aligns so beautifully with with what we've been learning. Isn't this, isn't this the third time that that yeah. has come up, that yeah. theme, that idea? Yes. So obviously this is a, this is a recurring thing that theme that we really need to absorb as moms to begin. How can we really take this and coach and train our kids that failure isn't failure. It's just a pathway to success. Absolutely. Yeah. You're not always going to be good when you try something, you know, yeah. Um, but if you practice it, you will get better. All right. And that takes us to the next lesson that you teach in brain training. Anything worthwhile takes hard work. Mm-hmm. Talk, talk to us about that. Yeah. So uh, most things that are really important um, are things that didn't come easy. They are things that, uh, you know, take hard work. And so to learn as a kid to... Uh, how to put in that extra effort and to not shy away from hard work, but to step up to it. Um, and that, you know, even when you want to quit to keep going, and that's something that happens a lot in our training. Um, you can see sometimes when your student is frustrated, but if you just tell them, you know what, I know you're frustrated, let's try it three more times and then we'll move on to something else. So it's putting in that, okay, like I wanna stop, like everything in me wants to stop, but if I just do three more reps or if I do it three more times, um, you know, then that hard work pays off. Absolutely. Hey, so we need to take a quick break. Um, Hear a word from our sponsor, which is Learning RX. Are you concerned about your child's reading or spelling performance? Are you worried your child's reading curriculum isn't thorough enough? Well, most learning struggles aren't the result of poor curriculum or instruction. They're typically caused by having cognitive, cognitive skills that just need to be strengthened. Skills like auditory processing, memory, and processing speed. LearningRx one-on-one brain training programs are designed to target and strengthen the skills that we rely on for reading, spelling, writing, and learning. LearningRx can help you identify which skills may be keeping your child from performing as best. In fact, we've worked with more than 100,000 children and adults who wanted to think and perform better. And we'd like to help get your child on the path to a brighter and more confident future. Give us a call at 866-BRAIN-01 or visit learningrx.com. That's learningrx.com. And we're back talking to Kim Hansen, CEO of Learning RX, about some important life lessons for parents and kids. So you've shared with us lessons that your parents taught, and you've shared with us lessons that you teach kids in brain training. Um, but you've also mentioned that you've taught your own kids a few lessons of your own. And so uh, the first one that you told us about was be a giver, not a taker. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So this is an important one when you have a toddler, right? Because toddlers are all about mine, mine. Uh (laughs) And, um, you know, you have to try to uh, instill in them um, how to be a a giver, not just always a taker. I mean, you, I, you know, when you meet an adult who is a taker, not a giver, they're, they're not someone you want to spend a lot of time with. And so you know, I want my kids to be successful. So just teaching them, you know, how to say sorry and thank you and please. Um, Even when they were like babies, I taught them sign language and, um, you know, for please, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that even when they were a little bit older, I could sometimes like if, if someone gave them something, I could be like standing behind, you know, that person and I could sign to them and they'd be like, oh, uh, please, or like, thank you. <laughs> um, 
And so, you know, just, just teaching them that, teaching them how to like pass out things instead of, you know, this is all mine, just how to, how to share and how to be life-giving versus life-sucking, um, you know, that your goal should be anytime you enter a room or an event that you leave it better than you found it because you left life there. Mm. Um, and so that's something that I've always, you know, my daughter, Lily, my youngest, she's now 20. <laughs> um, but I think you guys have met her when she walks in a room, she just like lights it up. Like she's yes. sunshine. You know what I mean? Like she'll come up to me and she'll be like, good morning, my beautiful mother. You know what I mean? It's just stuff. When you have a kid that talks to you like that, you're like, how can you not smile? Right. Right. Um, and just people just find her life giving mm -hmm. and, uh, all my kids, I think they do, but, uh, you know, you want to teach that to your kids. Absolutely. And it, I love that. It makes sense thinking about that. She's the youngest, that that's something you were teaching your children very intentionally be a giver, not a taker. And I love that phrase. You said, um, give life, don't suck life. Yeah, right. Don't suck life out of a room, bring life to a room. But it makes sense that your youngest, she received that lesson, not just from you, but from her older siblings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's so cool to see that obviously, as you're describing that, that plays out, it trickles down in your family. That's yeah. Crazy. I think sometimes too, we don't realize how much we have to give. Mm -hmm. And if we start giving when we're young, then we'll be generous throughout our life. You know, I know I've even spent time with uh, Compassion International in the, and we went to Africa and we were kind of in some of the worst slums in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when I was uh, speaking with these kids, just to share with them, like, like they had nothing, but they had a smile to give, mm -hmm. right? and they have uh, wisdom, they can do something kind for someone. So we all have something to give. And if we think about how we can be kind and how we can give, um, that that's really important. Um, kind of on the flip side of that though, too, is how to be a good receiver. Yeah. And, okay. and uh, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, you kind of like pull your boots up and <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you always carry everything and you open doors for yourself and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know when I had, so I have twins and um, when I had my twins um, and you have to carry like two car seats, it can be like really heavy. And I remember one day I was walking towards the church and I had, you know, to a car seat in each one. And it's probably like 25 pounds each. Right. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Oh, like I can't carry these babies anymore. Like, God, you need to like, send me help. And then when I got up to the door, there was a friendly guy with a big smile and he opened the door and was and like welcomed me. And uh, he's like, Oh, do, do you want me to carry one of your babies? And, <laughs> and my, my response though was no, I'm almost there now. <laughs> and, and then I started to think about, wow, here I asked God for help and God sent me the help. And what did I do? I didn't receive it. And so you have to be a good receiver. And so that day I really learned, like if someone offers me help, I'm going to just say, yeah, I would love some help because otherwise I'm robbing them of a blessing. Yes. So good. Yeah. Such a really, really good balance from, I mean, just remembering from what you talked about, even from your, the first life lessons, which is kind of more on that side of, you know, work smart, do things well, give it all your effort, which if you, if you just stay on that side of the spectrum, yeah, you can tend to be in this perspective of I'm completely self-reliant. I can do all things on my own. I am successful unto myself. And then I love that you're saying, well, no, you've got to have the other side too. You've got to have this beautiful balance of being a good receiver as well. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really good for us to hear. For sure. And so then your last lesson is to be faithful in little things every day. What does that look like? Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are so many little things that you can be faithful in. And um, a lot of times we just think, well, what if, you know, will anybody even notice? Mm -hmm. um, but things just like, 
like have a clean room or make your bed or, you know, be on time, look people in the eyes, um, just even like respect elders. I remember when I was little and uh, we had a lake home, uh, my grandparents did, we called it the cottage. And when adults would come, if we were sitting on the couch, we were supposed to get up and like offer them our seat. So just like how to respect an elder or uh, uh, how to pick up your toys, how to be a good steward, you know, just kind of that personal responsibility. Um, and, you know, not to say things that you'll regret later. Um, I taught my girls like to keep all the sassy in their head. <laughs> and, <That's great. laughs> and if you can learn how to do that and just even like be a good friend to your siblings, because someday they'll probably end up being some of your best friends. Yeah, um, but it's hard to do that when you're like teenagers, right? Um, and so when you are faithful in those little things every day, I think you're trusted with more. So yeah, how do you get to the to be the CEO of a large company? Be faithful in little things, and and as you build that, you know, um, one of the things I always do with my kids is we do a ten minute tidy. So around like eight or nine o'clock at night, we go and we put uh, 10 minutes on the microwave counter. And right. then we all just like pick up and tidy up the house. And then when the alarm goes off, then we're done. And um, it's kind of cool because my son even, uh, when he lived in Australia <laughs> with uh, some roommates, I think he had some messy roommates and uh, he established a 10 minute tidy there. <laughs> nice. So oh, good. So it actually reminds me of this graduation speech that kind of went viral a few years ago. I can't remember who it was, but um, he said, if you want to change the world, start by making your bed every day. Nice. Yeah. And so, I mean, really because you're, you're just instilling really good habits yeah. um, in the small things for sure. I want all these, I want them all on a list. I may have to just type these up, up afterwards. You don't have to. We, we publish transcripts of everything. Well, I know, but I want it oh. in, a, I want it in like a, a nice sheet of oh, paper. Oh, like a big poster on the wall. Right. Like a, yeah, that I can just then stick up in my kitchen. And so, because you know I'm going to be talking with my kids about this tomorrow. So that I can stick this up in my kitchen and it can be the re a reminder. Because, you know, we just, I forget. I get all motivated. And then two weeks from now, I'm going to forget. And I, I'm going to forget that I need to be encouraging my kids to be good receivers and to work smart. And I'm going to forget about 10 minute tidy. And yeah, you know what? Let's do it. And let's make that available as a little. Okay, we'll make it as a PDF. For yes. Our listeners. yes, we got to do that. Got to okay, do that. That's it. a great Kim, idea, Terry. Kim, this is so okay. good. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there are a lot of people out there that have taught me a lot of things. Um, you know, because I am a learner, I've read a lot of books, listened to a lot of tapes. And then, you know, if you think about just how to apply those things, uh, you know, and, and just start with one thing, you yeah. can't do it all, right? right? You can't, you can't have everything. Where would you put it? <laughs> right. 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 Well, Hey, we're almost out of time, but I want you to tell the listeners real quick, um, about learning RX specifically. Tell us about learning RX. Yeah. So learning RX is a brain training company and we can help. Uh, really anyone who wants to do things better, faster, and easier. So, you know, if you know someone who's uh, struggling to learn to read, or maybe they can't remember what they've read, or maybe they have a hard time paying attention, or they're easily distracted, or, you know, it just takes them too long to get things done, um, and they want to be faster, <laughs> um, then brain training is something that can be very powerful in building skill and uh, looking at those cognitive skills. Um, also, I do we do have a book that my dad and I wrote together um, called Unlock the Einstein. Mm -hmm. And if that is something that you are interested in downloading, I have that available. Um, if you just go to our website, we have a new tab that says uh, brain training resources, and you can download that for free, along with some brain training games even. Nice. You can download the whole book for free? Yep. The whole book. Oh, okay. The whole awesome. book for free. Right. Yep. Yep. And um, so- And you can also, people... yeah, you can also call one of our centers um, or call our 866 
brain 01, 01, I think. 01, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, set up a consultation or like an assessment to go in. And if you're, if you're worried about one of your kids um, uh, and want to see where they are when it comes to their cognitive skills, um, it's something that can be done. And we do it all the time, every day. And then the cool thing is, is we can not only assess them and uh, pinpoint why they might be having a difficulty, but then we can tailor brain training that works on what they can't do and turns it into a, I can do it. So good. And um, so for people who actually want to change lives for a living, you also have opportunities for them to open learning RX centers around the country, right? Yeah, so uh, we have so many cities uh, where uh, there's availability to start your own brain training center. So if you've thought, man, I've always wanted to be my own boss <laughs> and uh, I've always wanted to have that flexibility and do something meaningful in my community, we do have opportunities to uh, open your own brain training center. And so how would people find out about that? Uh -huh. So you can also go onto the learningrx.com and uh, you can click on a tab called open, open a center and that will take you to uh, a site that ta uh, tells all about how to uh, open your own brain training center. All right. Yeah. So look, we are out of time and need to wrap up, but this has been a fantastic conversation today. I would just love to thank our guest, Kim Hansen, the CEO of Learning RX. If you would like to learn more about Learning RX, like Kim said, you can go to learningrx.com um, where you can also um, download her book that she co-authored with her father, Unlock the Einstein Inside. Thank you so much for listening today. Um, if you liked our show, we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review. Um, if you would rather watch us, you can subscribe on YouTube. Um, and so please follow us on social media at The Brainy Moms and on Instagram at The Brainy Moms, at Dr. Underscore Amy Moore, and at Teresa Miller. So look, until next time, we're busy moms and we know you're busy moms. So we're out. Yeah.